Sandro Botticelli, Madonna with Child and Saints, Pala del Trebbio, Trebbio Altarpiece. Sweet faces, languid eyes, long tapered fingers, superfine elegance and exceptional attention to detail. Impossible to mistake it. This is a work of the famous Sandro Botticelli, the master of some of the most loved masterpieces of all time. Have you ever heard of Botticelli's Venus or his magnificent spring? Well, the spring was commissioned by Lorenzo di Pier Francesco dei Medici, the same member of the powerful Florentine family who also ordered our work, the Pala del Trebbio, Trebbio Altarpiece, named after the castle where it was kept. When this work was painted, few people knew how to read or write. Almost everyone, however, knew how to read images, in the sense that, from a work of art, the men and women of the time were able to find out so much information you wouldn't even imagine. Do you want to join us in our discoveries? Let's start our hunt for the details. Can you see the two gentlemen dressed in red, holding a box of ointments in their hands? They are the saints Cosmas and Damien, two brothers who healed the sick for free. The Medici family, who it must be said were a dynasty of bankers, chose them as patron saints, that is, as protectors. If you find Cosmas and Damien in a painting, then you can be sure that behind the work is the hand of the powerful Florentine family. Even Saint Dominic, the friar with the black and white robe on their left, was an important figure for the Medici family, who, just think, had two rooms reserved for them inside the Dominican convent of San Marco in Florence. And if in a painting you also find this unmistakable gentleman, dressed in dromedary fur, then you can be sure that the painting is linked to the city of Florence. It is Saint John the Baptist, a hermit in the wilderness and protector of the Tuscan capital. But that's not all. The presence of Saint Francis, the friar with the grey habit and the shaved head, can be interpreted as a geographical indication. How it reminds us that the Trebbio Castle is close to one of the oldest and most famous Franciscan monasteries, that of Bosco ai Frati. We can also see St. Lawrence in the painting, easily recognizable by the gridiron on which he was sacrificed. We know that the commissioner of the work was called Lorenzo di Pier Francesco, and that his adoptive father was the legendary Lorenzo the Magnificent. Two clues for a hypothesis. But those aren't by any means all the details and symbols. There are so many. The cypress trees, typical of the Tuscan landscape. The shell that symbolizes Mary's motherhood. Have you noticed how the throne, the floor, and the surrounding wall are all marbled? Botticelli used this special decoration that evokes marble to make the scene more regal, an effect that also characterizes the famous Florentine marbled paper. Beautiful. Shall we have a go at making some too? Follow us. Here's what we need. A ruler, baking paper, coloured ink, skewer sticks, a few 200 gram paper sheets, shaving foam, a low tray. Fill the tray with shaving foam up to the brim. Using the ruler, 
level the shaving foam, trying to make it as smooth and even as possible. A handy trick is to place the ruler over the edges of the tray. And now for the marbled effect. Choose two colours and start dripping small drops of ink into the centre of the tray, leaving the edges clean. First one colour, then the other. We have chosen yellow ochre inks, inspired by the marbled effect in our painting. Once you have added a good number of drops, use the toothpick to modify them, drawing curved lines. If you like the design you have created, take the cardboard and place it on top of the coloured part of the foam. The sheet must fit completely inside the tray. Gently press each part of the sheet down with your fingers so that it is completely attached to the foam. Now let it sit for five minutes. Meanwhile, place a large sheet of baking paper next to the tray. After five minutes, lift the sheet off the tray by pulling it up very carefully from one of its corners. Place it on the baking paper with the foam side up. Secure one edge of the sheet with your fingers. Place the ruler on one side and pull it towards the opposite side with a continuous motion so as to scrape off the foam and uncover the wonderful decoration. You can continue experimenting with new decorations, adding a little foam and smoothing again. Wow. Let's try the peacock effect. Distribute the drops in regular rows, as in the image, and shape them with a toothpick, forming many curved lines. Add more drops and move those too. When you have finished, start tracing straight, parallel lines with the toothpick that go from one part of the drawing to the other. Now follow the procedure you already know. Beautiful. Very elegant. You can indulge in shapes and colours of your choice, as in these examples. They will all be amazing. If you cut the cards into small rectangles, you can create lots of original bookmarks to give away as gifts. Everybody will want one for sure. <laughs>